been fine. Good. Um, you know, I'm fine too. I've been I've been eating phase bread for the past two days. <laughs> there, there's hardly any left. It's very good. It's quite substantial. It's it it will stick to your ribs for sure. But yeah, it's, yeah. It it's, lasts. It's actually it lasts, pretty refined. It's though. a long time too. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I thought uh, Catherine was going to join us today, but I think that um, she's not feeling well because, uh, you know, she's in San Francisco now, so she's got really bad jet lag from uh, flying from France, so I think she's not going to join us. Uh, so let's just go ahead with this. Um, why don't we do the form from the beginning to just to break in here a little bit? Oh, there she is. Catherine, good morning. Hi, I'm sorry, I couldn't connect. I don't know why. Oh, uh, well, like... it's, it's a computer, who knows? I was, just, I was just apologizing for you to James because I thought maybe you were not feeling well because of the jet lag. So I said, well, poor Catherine, she's probably going to take the day off. Can't, can't hear you. You're okay. I slept for the first time I slept through the night last oh, night. Good. good. I'm glad to hear it. Good. All right. Let's do the form from the beginning up through move number six. And then if you have any questions on number six, we'll handle those and then go on to move number seven. All right. So from the beginning. Okay, Catherine, why don't you do one for us? Now that you've had a good night's sleep. Okay. 
Yeah, your computer's I'm, kind of screwed I'm up. I'm not good so. at it, but I I worked on it, but I'm just like missing, obviously. Yeah, you're you're you're. Uh, uh, say something, Catherine. So the. Say something. Hi. Hi hi. Okay. Catherine, uh, make a fist for me and bring it up close so I can see it. All right. All right. Good, good, good. That's a good fist. Lots of people, I don't know why, but lots of people, when they make a fist, they put their thumb on top rather than wrapping, wrapping it around. When you put your thumb on top, you're you're gonna break your thumb. So you wanna you wanna have it under. And when you hit with a with a tight sheet fist, you don't hit with these big knuckles in back here. You just hit with these two knuckles here. Boom. Right. It's more like a bullet. Okay, James, let me see you do it.
Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so I was thinking about this class uh, earlier. And starting in the new year, in 2024, I want to start this form over again. But that gives us, essentially, six months to finish up this uh, form. Uh, if you're going to go through it again, which I would suggest next year, we can go a little bit more deeply into the into the Xin Yi and especially the Negong. Uh, so what what you should be doing internally to to power these movements. Um, but what I want to do for the end the end of this term, we've got gee, we've only got one more week. We've got one more week of classes, and then for the July 4th holiday, we're going to take the four-day weekend off. Annie and I need a little break. Everybody always takes a break on July 4th anyway, so uh, we're going to take a break. And then the new term will start when we come back uh, on July, whatever it is, after the 4th there. Uh, and I, I want to get on to a, a more regular kind of routine. So... Basically, what I've worked out, now that we've done this a few times on, uh, on Zoom, is we're going to do one move per weekend and really try to stick to that. So uh, the, the first move, if we have new students, we'll do very, very slowly. We'll actually take two weekends to do the first move. But after that, the second, third, fourth, fifth move, uh, we'll, we'll devote one weekend to that. Now... To stay on track, that means we can't keep going back all the time and refreshing. So you're going to have to rely on the recordings that we've got. And starting next year, I want to work those recordings up in this very regular manner. And then we'll post them on a special page on the website. So you can always go back and check those. Also, if whether you've, I don't know whether you've checked it out or not. But the page for the beginning Tai Chi class on the website has all kinds of videos on there from my master and his master and from uh, Master Feng's eldest daughter, who was very, very good at it. That's a really nice learning video because uh, they've set this up so that when she's doing a move, you see it from the front and the back at the same time. It's a split screen, one's front, one's back, and they're filming it exactly at the same time, so they're perfectly matched. That's really handy for learning the basic form. There's also a series of four, four or five or six uh, videos that Master Feng did in Japan where he was teaching this form. <clears throat> and he was, he was very, very popular in Japan, and he went there many times to teach this group of people there. Um, and when he was demonstrating there for those classes, <clears throat> he really simplified his movement and was very, very clear. So they're excellent videos for learning the first form. Now, the way he did the form, Back then, this was probably in the early 90s, uh, the way he did it back then and the way he did it later w was slightly different. But as you'll see, if you, if you check all those gifts, there's, all kind, there's a video from, uh, uh, <clears throat> from Spain. There's, uh, there's all kinds of stuff on there. Every one of those videos is slightly different, right? So <clears throat> what we're doing is going to be our standard. But the truth is, everybody does it just slightly, slightly differently. Don't let that throw you off. The, the basic, that's, that's just like a little change in the frosting. But the cake is the same in every case, right? So take advantage of those. Uh, I was writing something today. When I started Tai Chi, there was no internet. I mean, there was no internet. The, the internet became really public in 1993. I started in 86. So we didn't have the internet. We didn't have YouTube to check all these videos out. Uh, there were DVDs 
but I had never seen one of them. I hadn't seen any DVD until maybe 1998 or something like that of Master Funk. Now, I remember the first time I watched a video of Master Funk, and it was kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like the, the bar, the bar is way up here now, all right? Uh, it was very interesting, but, you know, with YouTube and stuff and, and the stuff we got on the website, I cannot express to you what an incredible treasure that is, that no previous generation ever had that. You had your master, your teacher, and that was probably it. Now, hopefully you had a good teacher, but, you know, it's very, very helpful to see different people doing the form in their way. And then ultimately what you realize is it's, it's your form. It's about you. It's about the way you do it. Right? So it gives you permission to, to be yourself rather, rather than to try to be somebody else, to be Grandmaster Fong or Master Sean or, or me for that matter. Okay. So, I want to say just a couple words about uh, White Crane, the sixth move, and then we're going to go on to move number seven. All right? So just a couple of thoughts about this. Um, and I'll just do it, and I'll, and I'll kind of talk, talk through it as I do it. All right? When you do this beginning part of this, keep your shoulders relaxed. All right? Even though I'm doing lots of stuff with my arms, look how relaxed my shoulders are. Especially when you get here. It's very easy, it's very, very common for people to raise their shoulders when they're mo moving their arms. So you'll see, you'll see this. kind of, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not much, right? It's a kind of stiffening, stiffening and raising the shoulders, right? Yeah, it'll wear you out, right? Don't do it. Just relax. Right? See, they're, they're down. Lowering, relaxing the shoulders. It's not that you're lowering them, but you're bringing them down. You're just relaxing them. That's a big part of keeping your chi down, of dropping your chi. All right? So there's the first thing. Second thing, when you, when you do the transition from straight ahead to this direction here, uh, that's also a place to check your shoulders and make sure that you're not raising your shoulders. Let me show you what it looks like when you raise your shoulders. It's very easy to do, right? so just, you know, stay loose. Okay, when you go into the third part, a couple of thoughts. There's nothing wrong with moving into that third position and then almost sort of pausing. Let me show you what I mean. You just almost, almost pause or stop. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it gives you just a moment to, to kind of get yourself back together on this new direction. However, there's nothing wrong with not pausing. You can just keep moving. In reality, if you were doing this in a, a push hand situation, you would just keep moving. So let me demonstrate that. Right? Either way is fine. Personally, I would suggest that at the beginning, you kind of pause a little bit. Right? It, it's not that really that you stop. It's, it's, just it kind of looks physically like you're stopping but inside you kind of continue very slowly and then 
your physical body joins the movement and you go ahead. Right? Either way is fine. Um, final thing. When you're doing the, the three figure eights, each of them has a very particular purpose. And your eyes should, should follow that purpose. Actually, your eyes should lead that purpose, right? Your mind leads. Well, where your eyes go, your mind tends to go. So watch. Let me demonstrate. One, you're looking at your own hands because you're doing chin up down here. All right? Wind up two. You're hitting to the right, so you better look at what it is you're hitting. All right? And three, boom. All right? The third one, there's two functions. One is a throw where you're using your shoulder. And the guy, the guy that you're throwing is actually facing you. you. You, He tries to hit you, you grab his arm, you tuck your shoulder under his shoulder, and then you throw him. So there's a, a perfect kind of wrestling move where you don't really use your eyes. You're using your, uh, your body sense, your proprioceptive sense. You've got your shoulder tucked under his shoulder that's what you're using to sense his body. So your eyes, in a sense, just sort of stay in neutral. But then at the very end, watch my eyes. Your eyes go from sort of neutral to aiming. All right? That's that one-inch punch. Boom. You better look at what it is you're trying to punch. Clear? Okay. Let's go on, at least to introduce uh, move number seven, which is called walk obliquely and twist step. So and a, a really important part of this move now is the footwork. Let me change the camera angle here just a little. Like maybe even a little more. Okay, when you're doing Tai Chi, you're standing on a compass, on an eight-sided compass. And wherever you move, that compass goes with you, but I can't make the tape do that. So we just have to, have to think of you're on an eight-sided compass, all right? The, the footwork in this is going to step back along this angle here, all right? Then it's going to step out to this angle, you're going to kick, and you're going to come right back to where you began. So it's one, two, three. That's a triangle. One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, it really is like a dance class, right? One two, three. Okay. All right. White crane. Weights, weights all on the right leg. All right. One. 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 Right. 
So you're coming down from your shoulder to your waist at about 45 degrees, right? And it's not your arm doing it. It's your body doing it. All right, watch this guy. Now, there's different ways to do this move, but this first one, we're actually going to do double, all right? One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Now, unfortunately, I don't have anybody here to, to demonstrate uh, this with. Um, we're, you, can, you can see that the timing on this uh, has to do with your footwork. All right. One, two. Watch, watch this guy. All right. The down chain is going to turn left, it's going to turn right. You go left, you go right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Now, in real life, when you, when you do uh, this move, is a retreat. Someone's attacking you. So you just step back. Right. Here someone comes in, you step back. Now, lots of times in Tai Chi, you don't step back. Someone attacks you, you actually step forward toward them. But in this case, we've decided to retreat. All right. And he's, he's coming at me like, uh, like this. You retreat and knock his hands away. All right? Retreat, knock, knock. So the first, uh, this is defensive. He's, he's reaching out or maybe he's reaching out to punch or whatever. You knock his hand away. The second one is the counterattack. Block, counterattack. So you're blocking him, and then you're slapping him upside the head. All right, where are you slapping him? Right, right on the ear, probably. All right. In real life, you don't, you don't do this at the same time. It's not two things like this, both at the same time. It's one, two. One, two. One, two, one, two, all right? It's very fast, and the reason it's fast is because this is doing it. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Shift your weight, one, two, all right? That's what's going on. Now, when we do the form, you practice it slowly. One, two, one, two. One, two, very simple. That's a retreat. Now we're going to do the same thing on an advance. All right? Let's just start from the beginning. One, two, three, four. So you're doing it twice, once when you're retreating and once when you're advancing. Just the same thing. One, two, three, four. Those are the first two moves of this pretty long uh, posture. Yeah. Malcolm, so on three, you go, you do a side step, and then on four, you go forward. Watch. One, two. Three, four. Oh. So, of, of all the moves in the form, this one is most like a dance move, all right? Because it, it really is one, two, three, four, all right? It's just like dancing. One, two, three, four. It's a rather formal dance, right? But, all right? 
And then, and then the hand work just uh, coordinates with the foot work. One, two, three, four. Right? Or if you were doing it in real life, right? If you were doing it in real life, it would look like this. <laughs> but that's, it's exhausting to do that. And so we're just going to slow it down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I'll try, I'll try to, get, to get it on the blue lines here so that you can see. All right? One, two, three, four. And then relax all your weight on the right and kick and push. Right? So you're coming right back to where you started. The push, the push is like this. It's not straight out like this. It's at an angle. All right? You're pushing not with the palm, but with the edge of the hand. This side you're pushing with the palm. On the right side you're pushing with the palm. With the left side you're pushing with the edge of the hand. One, two, three, four, sink. Kick, push. All right. Your uh, left hand should be uh, just to the left of your own Dan Shen, of your own center line. Your right hand should be over your right knee. All right. So here's my right knee. My right hand is right over it. Bah! One, two, three, four. Relax and sink. Kick and push. Good. One, two, three, four. Sink and relax. And kick and push. All right, and you're right back where you started from. One more. One, two, three, four. Relax and sink. Kick and push. Okay? Catherine, let me see you do it. Okay. Sink, kick, push. Good. All right. Um, what was I gonna? I was gonna say something. I don't remember. All right. Good. One more. Oh, uh, when you're standing in um, in the one inch punch. It's not straight ahead. It's at 45 degrees. All right. One, two, three, four. Relax and sink. Kick and push. Okay, James, let me see you do it. Good. Okay, guys, practice that. Tomorrow we're going we're gonna to finish this move tomorrow, and, uh, which means we're going to have to start on time and, um, and work because the rest of the move is pretty complicated. Watch.
You know, there's a lot to go over there, all right? Okay, before you go, I want to show you guys a, a picture, all right? Hold on just a second. I'm gonna, I've got to get a prop here. So uh, years ago, before COVID came, I had some traditional bao ding, some uh, wooden meditation balls made up. And these that I'm showing you are uh, made of pink ivory. And you hold them in the palm of the hand and, and meditate, all right? Let me show you a picture. This is, uh, you all remember Matt. Well, yeah. some of you may remember Matt. Uh, James, you'll remember Matt. He was, he, was at, he was at the retreat. This is his little uh, three-year-old girl, Penelope, all right? Hold on a second. This is his little girl. It's so beautiful. She's totally into Benete. Plus she has my little pony decal tattoos on her leg. So she is a very cool little girl. Is that Matt's daughter? Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, she's, she's lovely. And she, I guess she actually meditates with him. So I, uh, I made it, but, but you notice that the meditation balls she was using are white. Those are made from American holly, which is a very, very light, very white wood. Um, but she wants pink ones. So I, I arranged with Matt, if I can use her, her picture on the uh, website, I'll, I'll just give him a set of those uh, pink ivory balls and she can have those. Huh? No, she's very, very cute. It gave me some hope for the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, you all have a great day. We'll see you Thank tomorrow. You.